is not coming back. It's simply dead because it didn't get watered in the winter. Okay. Is there a variety of, of bougainvillea that's easy to train up onto a trellis or is that just something that's Any of them will train onto a trellis. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's just all a matter of tying them up. You get some of that new Velcro tie tape. It makes it relatively easy to do. Have some band-aids on hand because you're going to find you know, a few places on the fingers. But uh, no, any of the bougainvilleas can be trellised just fine. Tell me again where you can get the very coarse uh, mulch, very stringy. Coarse stringy mulch. I would say at least call Stone and Soil Depot. They are probably the closest place that I know that will definitely have it. I think Fertile Garden Supply probably has it, but if they say they have it, drive out and look at it before you order it and be sure it's what you're looking for. Yes, sir. I'm on the north side of town where basically they put down about six inches of topsoil on bleach. And what I've been doing is digging down into it somewhat and putting more soil into it. Is that worse than just mounding on top of it? It'd be much better to mound on top because. Um, Staying too wet, again, you know, we have seen very few plants die from too much moisture the past couple of years because it's been so dry. But when you dig a basin into the caliche that doesn't drain, when we get back into a wetter period of time, you're going to have just a bathtub there that's going to be holding a lot of water in that one spot. And when you have that, you'll have dead roots and you'll have plants that aren't happy. So It must have a lot of cracks in it because when I put water in it, it drains out within about 10 minutes then you're probably okay there. But in general, anybody sitting on a heavy clay, it's always a good idea. When you dig a hole, fill it with water. Be sure that it all drains out quickly. If it doesn't, you're always better to build up than to dig deeper. And please don't go jackhammer a hole. I see people plant trees to get, get a jackhammer out there and just chisel out a hole in the rock. I mean, I guess that's fine if you want to make a day just a natural hot tub or something, but very, very bad idea for planting your trees. They've got to have good drainage if you're going to do well with it. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a lot of mature oaks and St. Augustine grass that is attempted to grow underneath it. I don't really care to have 80% grass in my yard. So the best thing to do because of the root system and not wanting to build up over that soil, because I have leach it too, it would be just your idea of decomposed granite and some pots. And decomposed granite pots would be excellent. Or I mean, to a thick, replace the grass. Sure, or a thick mulch with pots of mine. Uh, either one of those things would work just fine. And either one of those things would smother the grass out and speed up its decline, so to speak. Uh, the but one. I'm not hurting the, I don't want to damage the roots. Oh, no, you enough. won't hurt your tree roots at all. But, but building up over those tree roots is not a good idea. You can build up over tree roots six, eight inches without causing any problems at all. You just don't want to bury the trunks. You bury the trunks of the tree even an inch, you're inviting problems. But you can cover the roots more deeply without causing any problem unless you go to adding a lot of soil. Now, one problem that people create, and I guess this would be a good one to put on the list of problems to solve, is that when you start trimming your trees up so that you can get around underneath them better, maybe you're trimming them up because you think your grass will grow better getting more light, well, live oaks have this little built-in self-protection that's evolved over the years. And if you get a lot of sun down to a live oak's roots, what happens? You get little trees grow. Suckers, people call them. Root sprouts, whatever you want to call them. And then people go through all sorts of horrible things to try to get rid of the oak suckers. Those occur and are growing because something in the tree's physiology says, oops, light on the roots. Must, the top of the tree must have broken off, so let's grow a new trunk. And the way that you get rid of oak suckers is you make the soil darker again. You can use your decayed granite. You can use three or four inches of mulch. You can plant a thick ground cover. But if you want to stop the oak root sprouts, make the ground deeper That's the, or darker. That's the only way that you'll get rid of root sprouts. Otherwise, you're going to just keep coming up because the plant senses in a chemical way that there's that something's happened to the top of the tree, and that's why it's trying to make new trunks everywhere it's coming up. Sweet puppy dog. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What is the name of that shrub over there? That shrub over there, the green one? Yes. That's xylosma. How tall does that grow? About 12 feet, if you don't prune it. 
You know, plants inside Lozma, that's a little small loquat. The variegated canna is, again, will grow in full sun and dry soil or will grow standing in water. This is an interesting plant called Equisetum, or horsetail. It's an ancient, ancient plant, one of the oldest plants on earth. That is an excellent plant to grow in a wet spot. This is your umbrella grass right here, and that's another plant for a wet spot. It's one of the new varieties of oxalis. If you're looking for color in the shade, neat, neat plant to put out there. This is one of the mandevillas. Again, you can create a screen or a trellis, and it's not an evergreen vine. It's something that's going to freeze back in the winter, but it's something if you want to create an interesting screen out around your pool or whatever, you can put some sort of structure for it to grow on. Just a few of the interesting plants. Will crossvine grow in the shade? It will grow, but it will not bloom. In the shade, uh, Confederate jasmine is a better choice. If it's at all bright, you'll get flowers in Confederate jasmine in the shade. Yes, ma'am. I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. Abor Aborbitae or something? Arborvita? Yeah, Arborvita. Okay. I love what Howard Garrett said in one of his original books. He said, every insect known to man either eats or lives in this plant. <laughs> I haven't purchased one. I was concerned. So, yeah. <laughs> Go to Oklahoma where they have colder winters. It's not such a problem, but you will not be happy with our provider here. Okay. Thank you. So much. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> yes, ma'am. Ferns, ferns particularly are good in shade. Ferns, most ferns are wonderful in shade. Uh, holly fern is our most durable evergreen fern. Japanese painted fern is a little bit more of a wimp, but is real pretty in the shade. And then, of course, there's what they call wood fern or river fern. Freezes to the ground, but comes back out, and it's good in shade. Um, I would not say that they require excessive moisture, but I will say they should never, ever get dry. Some plants can dry out without problems. Ferns, if they dry out, they die. So you don't have to water them really any more than you do anything else, but you do need to be careful that they never get bone dry. Okay, and you said the first one's holly? Holly fern. That's our most durable, trouble-free evergreen fern. Do you feel that uh, cornmeal is a good uh, antifungal, uh, particularly in uh, uh, Algeria and Ivy? Cornmeal itself does nothing, but cornmeal grows a beneficial fungus called trichoderma, which in turn attacks and destroys most damaging fungi. Yes, sir. Can you use it to prevent it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Whole ground cornmeal, not enriched. Right. Enriched, they've taken all the good stuff away and put some of it back, called it enriched. But uh, no, the whole ground cornmeal is, is still excellent. Very good. Yes, ma'am. I saw, uh, it was called Berkeley Sedge out at uh, Rock and Terra. Uh -huh. Is that something that would be a good ground cover in the sun? Some people like sedges, some people don't. Uh, nutgrass is probably our most common sedge in this area. I don't like that. <laughs> and I don't plant the other sedges either. Thanks for coming, guys. Well, guys, thank you so much. I will. I don't even remember what next week is. We'll have to look at the schedule. But one seminar that I, well, two upcoming seminars that I think you would thoroughly enjoy. If you do any container gardening, Donna that works with us, anybody that's ever been to her container seminar, this lady is just incredible. I can take six plants and set them together and they look like crap. Donna comes and takes the same six plants and go, choo, 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 choo. All of a sudden, they're beautiful. And if you want to see incredible containers, the first Saturday in April, come to Donna's seminar on creating uh, beautiful containers. The third, I believe it's the third Saturday in April, uh, we're going to have a real treat. A lady named Cynthia Pedregan. Cynthia and Hector are the ones that started and owned the Peachtree Restaurant in Fredericksburg. If you've ever eaten at the Peachtree, you know what a delight that is. Cynthia is going to come do a seminar for us on some of her cooking secrets and also show us how she uses fresh flowers to decorate cakes and cookies and things like that. And that's going to be that middle Saturday. I think it's maybe the 18th or something. And that will be, I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't have some samples of good things to eat. So you can be sure I'll be here. But uh, those are two of our upcoming seminars that are something that are really special that I think you might want to put on your calendar to come and join us for.
I'll stay and answer questions. Everybody, thank you for coming, and uh, we'll do it again next Saturday.